I would like to introduce myself. My name is David McDermott and I am an artist, but what I'm really interested in doing is destroying the linear time system. This is my partner Peter McGough, who is an artist, <laughs> and he will go into details on the subject I have just put forth. <laughs> We've worked together for 30 years. We met in 1980 in the East Village. Our photography is a record of our lives. And our painting is our ideas. And that's how we kind of, I see it that way. That the, when we started doing photography in the 80s, basically I photographed a world that David made. And, and the time experiments that he made. And the paintings were a part of a time experiment and a theory. Now, we're bookends, we're opposites. He's extreme. He's incredibly extreme, and, he, and I think it puts a lot of people off his extremity. But I think he has a lot of great ideas. He's an original thinker. And Ellen Ginsberg said to him once, you have to be able to talk about any subject. And society doesn't want to hear what he has to say a lot of the times because he's so extreme. And I think I don't want to ruffle people's feathers and disturb them because they're fragile. They might jump out a window. And, um, <clears throat> but I do find that he's very different. He's here, I'm there. He lives in Ireland, I live in the States, and we work together as a team. And we base a lot of our work on his theories of time. And I can, I can have that... Uh, happen, make that happen. I create and he theorizes. I base the art on his theories. Whether Basically, it, if I hadn't met Peter, I would be insane. Yes. <laughs> if it wasn't for Peter to negotiate in the world for me, I would be an insane person. And if I was by myself, I would be bored. And you basically became associated with me because... Well, you were interesting. How about that? When we made this painting, Friend of Dorothy's, we based it on a Stuart Davis ice cream parlor in New Jersey where he had all these abstract letters. And we made this painting and we used all these words that were thrown at us at childhood. So it was very political. Faggot, fairy, cocksucker, queer, pansy, Nelly, and um, some French people. It was to... our first, most important Let painting. It was the like... painting they loved yeah. about us. It put us it, on we, their so map. So we made this painting, and we thought, well, we can't never show this painting. And when Richard Marshall, one of the curators of the Whitney Biennial, came to visit our studio for the first time, we hid the painting because we were we thought, well, we can't. This is too much. And he said, "What's that painting?" He saw it because it was yellow. We pulled it out and he said, oh, it's really great. And that's what got us into the biennial. The idea of queer being odd or unusual, you know, I, these are the origins of so that's homosexuality. Where, that's where our work became political, I guess you could say. But it came out of a naivete. We weren't saying, we're political people and we want rights and we want this and that. It came out of uh, uh, just a picture that I saw in a, a book of Stuart Davis. And from that we thought we painted queer and it had all flowers around it. Was this a Victorian postcard, but it was offensive. But at that so, time we also wanted to create our own homosexual past, which was not in the history books. And so we began fabricating a, I mean, this is in the early 80s and you think gay liberation what happened in the 70s, you know. It's, but we weren't ever part of those militant people and gays and things like that. We just lived in this own little fantasy world. We created this world of an interior where we painted paintings and then we hung them on the wall. They're very primitive. When I look at them, and I've bought some of them at auction, they're very badly painted, but that's part of the charm. They're like a primitive painting and genre paintings. So we created this whole atmosphere and we lived in this little world and then people started getting interested in what we were doing. Yes, they were political, but we were not trying to make a political. Our statement of the past, the past, you know, David's statement, I've seen the future and I'm not going. And when you think of what's happening in the world with the oil spill and you think of all these things that are being destroyed, and that's the future. I had that thinking 
in 1959 when I was a kid. I could look around and I could just see that this was going in a very bad way. And it's obvious. The way I think of it is we've taken a road up to a mountain. There's just a cliff. There's, you can't go any further. And everybody's coming up this mountain. And we're saying, there's nothing up there. We have to go back to the village and take the other road. And that, that road, that crossroad, is back in 1928, someplace back there. We took the wrong road. This goes nowhere. An artist is a very special person. They don't think like most people. They, and they don't They're the really only ones that the society has given the right to go into the taboo and the forbidden. Everything comes in language. That's where everything starts, in language. There was no God before there was language. And in the Bible, the first sentence, there was the Word and then there was God. It all comes from language. Everything is language. And visual language, verbal language, it's all language. Well, it's communication. How, it's all how you communicate an idea. And if you're an intense person, your ideas won't come across. The person will just think they're crazy. Like the artist who, was, who now has died and they're gonna make a success out of him. He was a very difficult person. He smelled. He smelled. He had, he had food. food. I hated him. Whenever I saw him, I wanted to We run. tried to collaborate with him and he was just completely obnoxious. So, and we were his friends. His language, his language that you couldn't, no one could relate to his language. Who knew what Van Gogh was like? Who oh, I think like? he was insane. Van Gogh. <laughs> he cut his ear off. I think. That was, oh, they have a new theory that Gauguin cut it off. Really? Yes, that was the theory. I just read it. Yeah, that Gauguin in a fight cut it off. Well, they'll have to remake that Kurt Douglas <laughs> movie now. I, mean, I wouldn't kill anyone. I wouldn't want to harm anyone like that. I think Would you lie and cheat? No. Would you steal? No. I've had Would you corrupt a youth? No. Moral. What would you consider being immoral? Um, giving drugs to a young boy, giving him cigarettes, making cocktails, teaching him how to make cocktails. Plato said there's three gifts for the boy. Um, a, a promise of lifelong friendship, gifts pertaining to education, and introductions to high-level persons. The world has definitely changed since we started um, working together. The art world, I'll say. It was a white man's world, a straight white man's world. And Warhol was the fag of it, you know. And even Rauschenberg and Johns that were fags, they were a little afraid of him because they said to Emil D'Antonio, the filmmaker, he was too swish for us because he was so obvious a homosexual. I had an artist in, in front of Alice Neal tell me that I should definitely not produce any work that would link me with homosexuality. And she completely told him off and told him he didn't know what he was talking about and how dare he speak that way to a young boy, an artist, a young artist. So I'm just It saying, infuriated her because she connected it to herself as a woman. So the art world now has gone global and it's different. You know, there's, there's a world art from all over the world, and China's brought in all that. So it is much different when we were there. It was a white man's world. It was small. It was a small... Small white man's world. The artist is about going into the unknown territory and finding... I tell that to photographers. What you're supposed to do is find something that nobody's photographed. Lizette, Mo Lizette Modell said to Diane Arbus, who was her student, if you've looked through the camera and you recognize it, don't take the picture. Do you have any other questions? Oh, are we finished? Really? Oh, that's great.